So in part one of this tutorial series, we created the blueprints needed to turn our character based on the AOD keyboard unit. Now what we need to do is to make the character turn whenever it comes in contact with a trigger box. Later on in this tutorial series, we are going to implement this on our procedurally generated platforms and make it work just like in Temple. So in the third person character blueprint over here, we had created this logic over here using blueprint nodes. So in here, what we want to do is first make a new variable. I'm going to click on this plus icon and then type can turn and make sure the variable type is a boolean and then drag the get value of this boolean or can turn and then connect it to a branch link. Now I'm going to move this away, go to the side, drag these two over here and connect the A keyboard even first node over here and connect it with this branch node over here and drag the true value to the set desired rotation over here. Similarly, we're going to just copy and paste this tool. Let's copy it. I'm just going to move this away. And now I'm going to paste these. And then again, the same thing. Connect the D keyboard event, the pressed input node over here, to the branch node. And write the true value of the branch node to the desired rotation. And then, what we need to do is drag the can turn again. This time we're going to set the value of can turn. Connect the two execution nodes together. And then just leave it as it is. This icon over here, this checkbox over here, represent false in the case of boolean. So now what we need to do is make sure to press the compile button over here. So make sure to compile the code and then we're going to go back to the editor over here and in here we're going to click on this plus icon then go on the basics trigger box select it and what I'm going to do is click on this perspective button and select left to right just zoom out of it and then I'm just going to align the trigger box to the ground. Once that's done, go back to perspective. And in here, I'm going to drag this over here. Press the R key to quickly, you know, scale the object and then drag it. Now you got a bigger cube. Now, under the details panel over here, Go down over here, go under rendering and under rendering, disable this actor hidden in game to false. The reason we are doing that is so that we can see the actor during runtime, like over here. So now, while the trigger box is selected, Click on this icon over here and then go to open level blueprints. In here, right click under add event for trigger box 0, go under collision and select add on actor begin over. So the trigger box so before, from before refers to the name of the trigger box we have created over here. So from other actor, type cast to third person character. And from third person character, select set can turn. Make sure to enable this checkbox over here. And then click on compile. If you noticed any error in here, in the can turn, part over here it means that over here in the blueprint third person character where we created 
the can turn variable you actually have compiled it if you didn't compile the newly created variable over here then if you are going to take a reference of that variable anywhere outside of that blueprint it isn't going to work properly so make sure to compile the third person character blueprint before trying to reference the can turn boolean variable over here so now that we have created these two let's try if the game works currently you can't move so i'm going to just quickly move the trigger box over here and then play and yes now you can only turn once and after that you can't turn anymore just like in temple run and that's it for the tutorial thanks for watching and see you later bye